We began some weeks ago on a series we're calling The Goodness of God. The Goodness of God. Our text here in Psalm 34, verse 8, says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Hallelujah. Is the Lord good? Yes. One translation uh, talked about uh, the today's English version says, find out for yourself how good the Lord is. Now here the scripture is exhorting us to seek him for what purpose? To find out how good he is. Seek him to what end? What are we looking for? Hmm? Now, their, their spiritual principle is seek and you shall find. Jesus said that in Matthew 7. You'll find it in other places. Seek and you shall find. You'll find what? What you're looking for. Hmm? What if you're not looking to see how good he is? Well, you're not going to find that. You're going to find what? Hmm? Jesus said uh, on one occasion, asking an individual about the word, he said, how do you read that? How do you read that? And he said on more than one occasion, take heed how you hear. Take, how do you read it? Take heed how you hear it. We, we camped uh, recently on looking at uh, having ears to hear yeah. on the series in uh, uh, being led by the Spirit we just began. Have you noticed how these things tend to overlap? And I, <laughs> I, I don't plan that. But it shouldn't be surprising. I mean, it, it, the, the Lord is ministering to us in those areas. And they, they affect each other connect with each other. And what he's ministered to us before, even years before, has led to where we are now. Yeah. One thing's building on the other. And if you're just joining us here in recent times or just the last few months or years or so, it would behoove you to go back and catch up with us. Yeah. Right? What the Lord has given us. And the thing about it, it's, uh, there's uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of ministry available to you. More than that, I suppose. And you can download it off the internet. You can go back in the Word Supply. Um, the, the people were talking in the testimony about the series on tithing today. And especially people are looking at the New Year and uh, thinking about any adjustments and changes they might make. If you're not a tither, let me encourage you. Take this seriously. Forget about what you think you agree or disagree with this preacher or this church or this denomination and just get between you and God and the Bible. Come on, are you listening? And, and see what it says about these things because this is for your benefit. You know what God is able to do for tithers? Rebuke the devourer off of their life. Come on. Now, if that ain't worth shouting about, right? And open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings until you don't have room to receive. That's running over. That's running over. Yes, it is. That's running over. Uh -huh. But if you're not a tither, then you don't qualify for those particular blessings. And it's not about mechanically doing something. It's about honoring God and giving him access into your life. How many want God in your business? <laughs> Somebody say, I want, God I want God in my business. In my business. Do you? Yes. Well, you got to open the door. Yes. He said, behold, I stand at the door and is he going to kick the door in and put on you what he, he's not. He's not unless you open the door and invite him in, unless you give him access to your life, you're not going to have things that he wants you to have, that he wants to do in your life. Tithing honors him and gives him access. Don't take my word for it. 
uh, do some study on your own. Put your nose in this book and, and find out. And how, how many are tithers in this place and you are excited about being a tither? Hallelujah. It's not about tithing to the church. It's about tithing to God. Hallelujah. Honoring Him. Putting Him first. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm saying a bunch of things the Lord has ministered to us over the years. Take advantage of it and catch up with us and it, it'll, it'll help you so much. Yes. Well, he's saying, taste and see, seek to find out a very specific thing, how good God is. Yes. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, it's, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. Now this, this is not believing anything about him necessarily, but that he exists. That God exists. But that's not the rest of the verse. That's not the end of the verse. You've got to go beyond just believing that he is. A lot of people believe he exists. But that doesn't give him access. What else must you believe? You must believe that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently. Diligently seek Him. That you're, you're seriously, sincerely looking for something in Him. What's a reward? Something good or something bad? Something good. You, you not only must be convinced that God is real, that, he's, that He exists. You've got to believe something about His nature and character. That He is a good God. And He does good for those who seek Him. In uh, Psalm 119, you don't necessarily have to turn there. They'll put it up, 119.68, NIV, 119.68 NIV says, You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. The Living Bible says, and this, this bears out in the original language. You'll see this in other places. The Living Bible says, You are good and do only good. The message says, you are good and the source of good. Train me in your goodness. Everybody say that out loud. You are good and the source of good. Train me in your goodness. See, this, this goes with the other scriptures. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, the, the one translation said, find out for yourself. How are you going to find out for yourself? Huh? If it's a good biscuit or not. How how you going to find out? If it's a good casserole. Huh? I mean, talking only goes so far. Right? And I only want to hear you tell me how good it is so many times. And then I get out my fork. Is that right? <laughs> get out my spoon. Why? Because I'm not going to really know. <laughs> I'm not going to really know how good it is until I taste for myself. I have to seek it out and find it. Locate it and taste it diligently. <laughs> And then and only then will I truly know that it is good or not. So you do not just need to hear and read others tell you about how good God is. That's okay, but that doesn't go far enough. Hmm? No, you don't need to just try to live vicariously through someone else's spiritual experiences. That's, right. That's not okay. That's right. You can thank God for it. You can shout about what God did for them. But you only want to hear that a couple of times. And you need to get out your spoon. And say, I got to try this for myself. Find out for yourself. Taste and see for yourself. What? That the Lord is good. He's good. He's all good. He's the source of good. 
He's only good. He always was good. He is good. He will always be good. Now, a lot of people will agree with you on that on the surface. But when you begin to dig down a little bit, they don't really believe it. They don't believe God is all good and only good. Many believe he has a dark side. He has a cruel side. Mean streak, if you will. That good and evil come out of him. People say, well, look around. Didn't God create everything? Actually, no. Isn't God in control of everything? Actually, no. Now, this flies in the face of what millions believe. The scripture teaches, and if you, hadn't, if you had been with us on the previous sessions, you'd be more hooked right now. Because <laughs> uh, we didn't just throw out an idea. We, did we go over some scriptures or not? We went over some scriptures. The scripture says everything that God created was good. Everything. Hmm? Everything. Back in Genesis, have you read it? God made this and it was good. He made this and it was good. He made that and it was good. And when he got through making everything, he said, and behold, it was very good. Can you look at cancer and say, behold, it's very good. AIDS, people starving to death. Come on, crime, violence, murder, and say, behold, it's very good. You know why? God didn't create any of that. Everything God created was good when he created it. But now people have twisted what he created and distorted it. God didn't create the devil. He created an anointed cherub. Hallelujah. But the devil used what God gave him to be creative with and he used it to invent evil. And the Bible said iniquity was found in him, discovered in him. You know where lying came from? The devil fathered it. Isn't that what John says? The devil fathered it. God didn't create lying. It's impossible for God to lie. Hmm? The Bible said God made men good, but they have sought out many inventions. They have distorted it. So no, God did not create everything that exists on this planet today. God's not doing everything that's happening down here. Now, if you're not sure what you believe about that, friend, please, don't get your eyes on me and think, well, I don't disagree. I don't agree with you, preacher. I disagree with you, preacher. Forget about me on that. Put your nose in the book. Amen. If what you believe is right, it'll be in there from Genesis to Revelation. That's right. If you can't find scriptures for it or for scriptures contradict what you believe, you need to change your little belief. Right. Well, I got a right to my opinions. No, you don't. <laughs> if Jesus is your Lord, you believe what he tells you to believe. Right. And don't make up stuff as you go along. That's right. That's right. Come on, somebody say it in faith. Lord, I will submit. To the truth of your word. Whatever you say is right. Now, if you'll be honest about that, all through life, you will discover things and you go, whew, I always thought that, but that can't be right. Look at there. This, this is right. And you will continually be adjusting yourself, adjusting yourself. Didn't the Bible say that we need to be renewed? Our mind needs to be renewed. So that we can know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look with me in James, please, the, the first chapter. God is good. God is only good. He's the source of good. He's always good. In James, the first chapter, I want you to notice this in connection with this. Chapter 1 and verse 13. Chapter 1 and thir verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, 
neither tempt see any man. Evil is the opposite of good. We don't use the word evil that much in our modern vernacular. We'd probably say bad. But it's the opposite of good. God cannot be tempted to do bad. Are y'all with me? How many believe this verse? Hmm? Sometimes God really wants to do some bad stuff, but he controls himself. No. 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 You can't even tempt God to be evil or do evil. And it's impossible for him to lie, which is lying is evil in a nutshell. It's everything that's bad about bad. False, not trustworthy, misleading, deceiving. Lying is what the devil fathered. And so it is an expression of evil. You want to be as far from lying as you can be. To yield to a lie and try to deceive a person on purpose is about as devilish as it gets. You do not want to be any part of that. Hmm? Somebody said, well, I had no choice but to lie. (laughs) You ever heard that? I had no choice. I had to lie. Don't make me lie. (laughs) Ain't nobody making you lie. I love them too much to tell them the truth. I just can't. No, you're lying some more. When you get straight on this, you realize I, lying is not an option to me. Hmm? If I'm going to be godly, if I'm going to be like the master, how many of you can picture Jesus telling a lie? Can't even picture it. Why? Never happened, can't happen. It is impossible for God to lie. Why? Because it's evil. Could you tempt him to tell a lie? Can you see Jesus saying after something happened, telling you, boy, you know, I wanted to lie to him. I really, I really wanted to lie, but I. (laughs) You got to make up your mind. Say it out loud. Lying Lying. is not an option option for me. me. It's not an option for me. I either tell the truth or I don't say anything. Hmm? But if I say it, it has to be the truth. Right? Elsewise, I am knowingly choosing evil instead of good. I'm knowingly asking the devil for help. Hmm? I don't want to tell the truth. I don't want to deal with the truth. Devil, help me out here. Help me out here. And he will be glad to give you lie after lie after lie. And you are yielding to evil. Where are you going to get a lie? You can't get it from God. Right? Where's the only source in town for lies? (laughs) The devil. (laughs) Verse 113. Young's literal translation. He said, let no one say, being tempted, from God I am tempted. Now there are whole schools of thought among, in seminaries and among theology discourses and groups. I've heard people use the term divine, divine deception. You talk about a blasphemous phrase. Divine deception? It, but it's because you got people who claim to be experts on theology who are not even born again. They don't even know God. So it's no wonder they're hopelessly confused. To, to an unregenerate soul, the Bible is a closed book. I don't care how many degrees you got. 
how brilliant you think you are. It's no wonder the Bible seems like foolishness to them. And I'm quoting scripture, am I not? It's foolishness to them. But it's not because it's foolish. It's because they are dead. Dead men can't figure out much. <laughs> oh, but when you're alive and he enlightens the eyes of your understanding and he opens your ears and he opens your heart, it's truth that makes free. It's light that brings glory. Let no one say when you're tempted, tempted to do what? Well, you're not tempted to do good. <laughs> you're tempted to do bad. Isn't that what he says? Evil, evil. He's talking about bad. When you are tempted, pulled to do something bad, you need to realize immediately God has nothing to do with this. Why? Because it's bad. And God can't be pulled with bad. There's no bad in him. He has no inclination for bad, no desire for bad. He is completely unresponsive to bad. Amen. Why? Because he is good. good. He's all good. He's the source of good. He's only good. He's always good. Don't say, well, God tempted me to do evil. For God is not tempted of evil, and himself does tempt no one. This, this should be a pillar in your life. Yes. Well, God put that bad thing in my life to teach me some things. God had nothing to do with the bad. Hmm? If it's bad, it's not God. And the reason I, I keep saying this is because when you're reading the Bible, you're praying you should be looking for God. How would you know you're finding God? When you find God, you find good. When you look for good, you find God. You remember Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. And he said, all right, I'm going to show you my goodness. Is that right? Why? Because his goodness is what he is on the inside, which is glory. Oh, hallelujah. But, you know, I know of people, they study the scriptures diligently. You know what they're looking for? Judgment. Woe. Woe is thee. So it is woe in there. It is. But to who? Who gets the woe? And who gets the wow? <laughs> if you do evil, and you want evil, and you choose evil, then you get to woe. Woe is for you. And woe is to you. <laughs> Why? Because you were looking for it. And you found it. Problem with, with wanting to do evil and going after evil is you're going to get you some evil. You're going to find it. And then you're going to find out the wages of it yes. is evil. Yes. Death is evil. Right. And it comes with. But it's not anybody's fault but yours because you looked for it. Right. You wanted it. Yes, you chose it. Oh, but if you look for some good. Come on, is that right? If you look for some good, yeah. seek for that, you'll find that. Right. And with the good comes the life, yeah, yeah, yeah. comes the reward, comes the wow. Yeah. What are you wowing about? About how good he is. How good he is. <laughs> Go with me please to Matthew. You believing with me? As you can see, this is one big subject. How big is it? <laughs> well, it's big as God. 
And we won't see all the details, but we can sure get the spirit of it, can't we? We can get the spirit of it. Matthew 7 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. He said, Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Y'all in a hurry this morning? Hmm? We don't want to get in too big of a hurry. You'll miss things if you do. And you want to remind yourself, is the Lord talking to us? You know, if I'm just rambling off on some silly things that came out of my mind, well, it'd be perfectly understandable and reasonable for you to be uh, impatient about it. <laughs> but if the Lord's talking to us, if he's answering our prayer, you want to run away and get out from who? From what? The flesh is impatient. And the more immature you are, the shorter your attention span. Is that right? Little ones have an attention span about that long. Is that right? Oh man, they get bored quick. They want something moving and happening. But there should be, as you grow up, your attention span gets longer. I said it should be. And you'll find that developing spiritually involves developing powers of focus yes. and concentration. Yes. That you're able to focus on something and keep your mind and heart on it yes. for periods of time and not be so easily distracted. Yes. The devil is the master of distraction. Don't let him do it to you. Focus and stay focused. I know uh, years ago, I was in a prayer meeting, and I thought it was going a little long, and I was getting a little antsy. I was looking at my watch, and the Lord spoke to my heart. I don't mean I heard a, a voice outside, but in, in here, the way he speaks to everybody, if you'll listen. He said, uh, what's your hurry? <laughs> I thought, I don't know. He said, what are you rushing away from and what are you rushing to? Hmm? And I realize he wants an answer. <laughs> this is not just rhetorical. Uh, and, and how many know there's no need in playing games with him? He knows, he knows everything. I mean, you, you cannot snow him at all. So I had learned that much. I said I'd be rushing away from prayer, away from the word, away from the church and fellowship to a sandwich <laughs> and watching the news. It was a night service. <laughs> well, that ain't too spiritual now. Is it? <laughs> Where are you? All things, whatever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now hold that place and look in uh, 1 Peter 3. They'll put it up on the screen for us. You can just stay there in Matthew if you want to. 1 Peter 3, 8. Matthew that's where we're coming back to, I think. Finally, he said, be, be of one mind, having compassion one of another, love his brethren, be pitiful or full of pity toward others, courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing. That means coming down on somebody, giving them a good what for, piece of your mind, railing. Somebody say, don't rail. Actually, I had a fellow tell me one time that he thought that's one of the reasons God gave us spouses. <laughs> he told me that was to have somebody to release on. Wow. Wow. 
No. <laughs> That's absolutely wrong. You're supposed to walk in love yes. with your spouse, yes. with everybody. Yes. No, you don't take your frustrations out on anybody. You just don't yield to them. People say, well, I just, I just, I need to get it out. No, don't let it in. Don't let it in. You won't need to get it out. Resist it. Don't yield to it. Resist it. <laughs> Quit making excuses for being carnal and fleshy. Contrarywise, blessing. In other words, render blessing. Knowing that you're there unto called, that you should inherit a blessing. What do you want to happen in your life? Blessing, blessing good things. Good. good things. Are you going to get good things if you sow bad things? No. Hmm? No. That's why he said if somebody slaps you, you don't slap them back harder. Why? Because if you do, you're going to reap more slaps. If you didn't like that first one, you sure don't want to sow more slap seed. <laughs> if you didn't like the slap, what you want is to put an end to any slap harvest coming into your life, which means so no more slaps. <laughs> if anybody slaps you, I'm not saying it's right or justified. One of the first things you ought to think is, did I slap somebody? <laughs> did I slap somebody? Because I'm sure getting a harvest here for some reason. <laughs> Most people don't think like that, do they? Most people don't want to take any responsibility for their past actions. But again, that's being carnal. That's being fleshy. It's being short-sighted. <clears throat> Aren't you glad you came this morning? <laughs> Blessing. What do you want to reap? Blessing. Then what should you sow? Blessing? Blessing? Do you want to reap a good mixture of good and bad? No. Then don't sow good and bad. Sow only good. Even if somebody does bad to you, just out of pure personal reasons, don't get them back. Because you'll be sowing more evil that will come back to you. Is that right? Do them good. Even though they don't deserve it and they don't expect it, if for no other reason, because you only want good coming back to you in your life. Come on, keep reading. Verse 10. For he that will love life and, and do what? See what? See good days. Let him refrain his tongue from what? Evil. evil. Why? If you talk evil, you're going to get evil. If you want good, you can't talk evil. Hmm? Next time somebody comes and wants to talk about somebody behind their back with you, something should immediately spring to your mind. Do I want somebody doing this to me? Do I want somebody over there huddled in the corner whispering about me behind my back? Then I got a choice here. Am I going to sow this? Am I going to participate in this? Because it's not right. It's bad. It's evil. I don't want evil. I want good. Right. Refrain your tongue from evil and your lips that they speak no guile, deception, which is the personification of evil. Verse 11, let him do what? Eschew, despise, resist evil and do what? good and seek peace and ensue it pursue it for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil and who is he that will harm you if you're followers of that which is good 
good. Back to Matthew 7 and 12. You believing with me? I'm endeavoring to take a five-day seminar and put it into a Sunday morning. Come on, are you? Huh? So stay hooked. Pay attention. Pay attention. Therefore, all things, whatever you would that men should do for you, what do you want them doing for you? Good, what, good things. How much bad things? No. How much? No. A little bit? No. 10%. How much? No. <laughs> bad stuff you want people doing to you. No. Stabbing you in the back. Hmm? Uh-oh. Pulling the rug out from under you. No. Doing bad things against you. Taking, stealing from you. No. Lying about you. No. How much of that you want? No. Then if you don't want any of that, right. tell me how to, how to fix it. How to fix it. No. You never do any of it. You never take anything from anyone. You never lie about anyone ever. You never talk about people behind their back ever. Well, how much of it do you want? Ever how much of it you want is how much of it you do. All things, all, someone say all things, all things. Whatever you would that men should do to you, that's what you do to them. Amen. That's the law and the prophets. Uh, skip on down to verse 16. You shall know them by their fruits. How do you know if it's good or bad? Hmm? You can tell the fruit. Excuse me, excuse me, I said it wrong. You can tell the root. By the fruit. Can't you? You can tell the root by the fruit. You'll know them by their fruits. You'll know them what? You'll know the root. You'll know the inside by the outside. Do men gather get grapes of thorns? Why? Because a thorn root is going to produce Thorns. Figs. Can you get figs off of thistle roots? No, No, you can't. Verse 17. Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil or bad fruit. Now this is plainer than most people would like it. (laughs) Hmm? People say, well, they got a good heart, but they'll lie to you, and they'll steal from you, and they, but, but they got a good heart. No. Really? No. The fruit's bad. Right. What does bad fruit tell you? Bad fruit. Where's it coming from? Where's this fruit coming from? Who's making them do it? Who's making these choices? Keep reading. A good tree, what? Red letters. Are these red letters? Who's speaking here? The master. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Is God a good root? Is he a good vine? Huh? That's why God can't do evil. None of it can come out of him. Where would he get it? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And that's what's going to happen at the end of all this. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which in heaven which is in heaven. Why? Because the will of the Father is good. And you can talk a bunch of stuff, but if you turn around and always doing bad, that reveals bad in the heart. Good chooses good. Bad chooses bad. Good comes out of good. Bad comes out of bad. Go to the 12th chapter. I tell you what, um, for time's sake, go to Luke 6. 
this is Luke's account of the same thing I was going to have you read in uh, Matthew 12. How am I doing on time? Huh? You in a hurry to go check the, the roast? No, sir. Watch the news? No, sir. <laughs> Somebody said, not now. <laughs> Might as well be honest. I mean, the Lord knows your heart. <laughs> you know, so much of the stuff we think we have to hurry up and do is so piddly. Right? I mean, in a hundred years, who's going to know our care? Right? We really need to have enlightenment to what's important and what lasts and what's priorities and not let all this other stuff cause us to be impatient and rush through the things that are important, that are important. Yes. Luke 6, are you there? Yes, sir. 41. Well, back up to verse 40. Let me get a little more of this. The disciples not above his master, but... Everyone that is perfect or fully developed, is what that word means, shall be as his master. Can you function and operate like the master did in the earth? It is available to us. It's available to us. You're never going to rise above how he operated, but you can rise up to where he operated. Didn't Jesus say, if you believe on me, the works I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do. Now that's not greater in level and scope. He, if he had continued in the earth, they'd have just got bigger and wider and wider. But uh, because bodies throughout the earth, the number of them, right, can become greater and greater. Verse 41, why behold the mote that's in your brother's eye, but perceive not the beam that's in your own eye. Now, so you've got a speck versus four by four, whatever, chunk of wood. How can you say to your brother, brother, let me get that speck out of your eye, because you definitely got a speck. <laughs> when you yourself behold not the beam, the huge thing that's blocking out your vision, you hypocrite, first get the beam out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to pull out the moat that's in your brother's eye. Keep reading. Four. <laughs> four. Somebody say four. 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 A good tree brings not forth corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Why would you say that? How do these go together? Because it's evil to judge. I said it's evil to judge. First of all, it's being a hypocrite. Hmm? Also, it's not love. You want somebody judging you? No, sir. Hmm? No, sir. Well, if you judge them, you'd be a hypocrite to get all upset when somebody judges you. Because they're just doing what you do. You want to be a good tree? Then you got to choose good. A corrupt tree doesn't bring forth good fruit. Keep reading. Every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs. Of a bramble bush gather they not grapes. You don't look at uh, grapes, beautiful vine with clusters of grapes, and go, that's got to be a thorn root up under there. That's a thorn root. No. You know it's a grape root. Because of what it's producing. Yes. What if there's thorns everywhere? Not a piece of fruit to be seen. You don't go, I know that's a good grapevine up under there. No. No, sir. no, you don't. 
A good man out of the good treasure, where, 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 where? In his heart brings forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Ephesians says, don't let any corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Now here's something you want to get ready to shout about. Have you been born again? I said, have you? Been washed by the blood of the Lamb? Have you been recreated in Christ Jesus? And is God in you? Is life in you? Eternal life in you? Then, is God good or not? Is God good or not? Huh? Where's God? Is He good? Huh? Is He in you? Then what else? Good is in me. Because God is in me. And God's good. So good is in me. In my heart. Inside. Hey, hey. Jesus said, John 15, 4. John 15, 4. You don't have to turn there. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine. Is he the vine? You are the branches. Hmm? What are we connect to? connected to? What kind of vine are we connected to? Oh, friend, we need revelation in this area. Hmm? It's not about me. It's about what I'm joined to. It's not about me. It's not about what's in my head. It's not about my flesh. It's about what my heart is connected to. I'm a born again branch. Uh Yes, sir. Off of the vine of eternal life. And the life that's in the vine flows to and through the branches. What's in him is in me. The life that's in him is in me. I'm not the source of it. I'm just connected to it. I'm not generating it. I'm just receiving it and yielding to it. But what we got to learn is how to let it flow. Let it flow unrestricted, unhindered through us until it flows out of us and produces fruit, good fruit, fruit that remains, fruit that changes things, changes people for the Good. Why? Good fruit coming through a good branch? Because the branch is connected to the good vine. Good vines connected to the good branch. Good branch produces some good fruit. Somebody say, good, 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 good. He said, I am the vine. Verse 5, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him. Abide means stay in, dwell in, live in. We don't just want to check in with the Lord for a few minutes on Sunday morning. We want to live in an awareness of our connection, our union with him. Live with that awareness night and day. Abide in him, stay in him, live in him. And I, he abides in me and I in him. Come on, sit out loud. I am in him and he is in me. Come on, sit out loud. I am in him and he is in me. Is he good? All good, only good, source of good. Then say it like this, I am in good 
and good is in me. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Romans eleven sixteen 16 says, if the first fruit is holy, the lump is holy. If the root be holy, so are the branches. Are we reading the Bible? This is not just man's theory and opinion. Say it out loud. If the root's holy. So are, so are the branches. If the root's good, if the root's life, so are the branches. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Galatians 5, and I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you on the way. Have I got another five minutes at least? The enemy is continually trying to convince you that you are not good. That's why it got so quiet in here earlier talking about good fruit comes out of, from a good heart, bad comes from a bad. Yes, sir. People get quiet and they go, well, I've done some bad stuff. Yes, that's right. That means I'm bad. <laughs> no. It means you've chosen to connect to some wrong things. Hmm? Instead of staying connected to the root, the divine root, that you're born again of. Hmm? And thank God for the mercy of the Lord and the cleansing of the blood. But you and I need to realize what we are. Hmm? Who we are, what we are, what our nature is. And quit focusing so much on the outside. Man, the Spirit of God saying that to us. He said it to us Friday night, right? He's saying it to us over. Quit focusing on the outside. Why? This is where the bad is out here, right? I don't want to be connected to that. I don't want to get drawn in, pulled in to that. I don't have to. I can be connected, abide in Him, live in Him. And you need to resist the devil. The devil will continually try to tell you you're bad. You want to be good, but you're not. You just need to admit what you are. You're bad. He'll bring bad thoughts to you. And then accuse you for thinking. Them. You talk about a sorry cuss. He will. He will. He'll bring evil stuff to you, bad thoughts to you. Get you to dwell on it if you'll yield to it. And then he'll say, look at you. Supposed to be a Christian. Supposed to be a Christian. Sitting there thinking that. You must be perverted. You must be evil. You must be bad. You're a bad person. And he, he pushes parents to say things like this to their children. You're bad kids. Just because a kid did something bad, you don't want to identify them as bad. They did something dumb. Because hmm? they yielded to something bad. But the enemy, you do not want to side in with the enemy telling them why. Because he is bad to the core. He, he's made his choice forever. He's never going to be good again. God made him good. He can look back and see, but he made his choice and he's never going to be good again. (coughs) And you and I, even though we yielded to bad and sin and wages of sin was death, we've been redeemed. (laughs) We've been redeemed. And even though we had bad in us, we had death in us, our inner man has become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things 
old things, all that old, bad, evil inner nature is gone. It has been passed away and all things have become new and these new things are of God and if they're of God, they are good. So what God made you and I inside in the new birth is of God, which means it is all good and only good. Now, if we will yield to that, that's him on the inside, good will come out of us. We'll talk good. We'll do good. Good fruit will be born. If we ignore that and suppress that and yield to what we're seeing and hearing and feeling out here, you'll yield to bad and produce bad. But if you're born again, that's not your nature. That's why it bothers you if you do it. If it was your nature, it wouldn't bother you. You'd think this is it. This is the thing. If it was your nature, the reason it bothers you when you do something wrong is because it's not your nature. It's contrary to your nature as a child of God. Come on, somebody say, evil's not my nature. I've made mistakes. I've done bad things. But it's not my nature. It's not my desire. It's not my will. God made me. He recreated me and everything that God makes is good. <laughs> I about preach myself happy here. Why wouldn't you be happy about this? Is it true or not? Roman, you, you, where'd you go? Go to Galatians 5, but just listen to these. Romans 15, 13. They'll put it up on the screen. You're going to Galatians. Romans 15, 13. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness. Filled with all knowledge and able to admonish one another. Somebody say, we are filled with goodness. What does it mean to be full of the Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit good? Hmm? Full of God. Then you'd be full of good. Philemon 5 and 6 and 7. This is the verse the Lord gave us for our Faith for Life classes that meet here in uh, Branson after the morning service. I know that's a little different, but I believe that's how the Lord led us. Yes, yes. So, somebody says, Sunday school? Not exactly, no. It's faith for life classes. Hmm? And the scripture the Lord gave us for them is this. He said, hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every failure that you've made in life. By the acknowledging of how short you have come of the glory of God and how pitiful of a failure that you are. Now, why, why am I saying this? Why am I saying this? For centuries, the enemy has influenced the ministry. Come on, are you listening? That being godly was basically focusing on and wallowing in our sinfulness. Our sinfulness. I'm nothing. I'm such a failure. But Jesus. Well, that, that sounds good to people that don't know any better. But we are not told to continually acknowledge failure and sin and shortcoming. If you make a mistake, you need to come to the Lord and acknowledge it and receive your forgiveness. And then you need to forget it. Come on, did I lose some? You need to put it behind you and focus on every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Friend, identify the enemy. He's the one. 
that is continually trying to tell you you're not enough. You're short. You messed up here. You thought that. You said this. Continually. He is the accuser of the brethren. He's not accusing you of something good. What's he trying to do? He's trying to convince you you're like me. You're a rebel. You're disobedient. You've thrown God's control off of your life. You're evil like me. Admit it. You like evil. Admit it. Admit it. Look at all evil stuff you've done. But he's a liar. That's right. I said he's a liar. Right. You have made some mistakes. And so have I. But since we've been born again, that's not my nature. Come on, somebody needs to say it. That's not my nature. That's not my nature. Good comes out of good. My nature is good. Why? Because God recreated me in his likeness and nature. I've been born again. My nature is good. I'm full of goodness. Why? Because I'm full of God. God's in me. It's not about who I am just as an individual. It's about what I'm joined to. It's about what I'm connected to. It's about who and what's in me. By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus, verse 7, for we have great joy and consolation in your love because the bowels or the insides of the saints are refreshed by you, brother. Refreshed by them telling them how much they've failed and how hard things is. And how many, No. That's why we've said, that's why one reason leaders are in these classes, uh, if somebody has an issue, okay, but we only talk about it a very, very short time, and then we talk about the good things that are in us that enable us to overcome. We don't dwell on the bad. We focus on the good. Now, I know that sounds simple, but how many know millions of people are just focusing on the bad? They talk it night and day, the failures, the bad, the mistake. And there's a reason why there's a temptation to do it. The enemy's pulling you to, to forget about the good and focus on the bad. He'll remind you a thousand times in a day of the bad, the bad, the bad, the bad. Trying to convince you. You like bad. You are bad. You want bad. But you rejected him and chose Jesus as the Lord of your life. And now he's nothing to you. And he has nothing in you. Oh, glory to God. Isn't that what Jesus said? He said, he has nothing in me. You need to say the same thing. Say it out loud. The devil is nothing to me. The devil has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. He's nothing to me. He's not my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. I didn't get my nature from the devil. I'm born again. I got my nature from him, from the Lord. The devil's nothing to me. He has nothing in me. Jesus is everything to me. And he is everything in me. Hey, hey. <laughs> For time's sake, go to Colossians. I I don't know that we'll have time for Galatians. You know what Galatians 5 is about? Fruit. Huh? Good fruit and bad fruit. Flesh fruit and spirit fruit. Can anybody mention some of the good fruit to me? Now the fruit of the spirit is love. Is love good? Oh boy. Joy. Is joy good? Yes. Joy is good. Peace. peace. Is peace good? Yes. Peace is good. Long suffering. Yes. Is that good? Yes. Gentleness. Yes. What's the next one? Kindness. Huh? Kindness. Goodness. 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 Better put it up there. Yeah. <laughs> Galatians 5, 22. Yeah. Fruit of the Spirit is love. Somebody say, when I say love, you say good. When I say the other, you say good. Fruit of the Spirit is love, 
joy, yes. peace, yes. long suffering, yes. gentleness, yes. goodness, yes. faith, yes. meekness, yes. temperance. Yes. All of it. All of that is good, 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 good. Hallelujah. Now, why can all of this good come out of us, out of our spirit? into our life. Can we love and receive love and give love? Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. Can we receive joy and be joyous yes. and minister joy to others yes. and, and peace? Yes. Can we be long suffering instead of impatient? Yes. Can we be kind instead of hard and cruel? Can, yes. can yes. we? Can yes. we? Yes. Can yes. we? Why? Why can we have this kind of fruit coming out of our mouth, coming out of our life, coming out of our actions. Why? Because the root in us is good. In Colossians, the first chapter, 26, Colossians 1, 26, he said, the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations and is now manifest to his saints. Are you his saints? Yes. What, what mystery? Verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory. Now, what is the glory? Moses said, show me your glory. He said, I'm going to show you my goodness. The glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is? What is the mystery? What is the glory? What is the goodness? It is Christ in you. The hope of glory, goodness. What is the hope of glory, goodness? It's the Christ in me. Oh, somebody say, he's in me. He's in me. He's in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Go to Galatians 2 in closing, I think. Galatians 2. We've known these things. We've heard these things. But so much of the time, they just haven't been nearly as real to us as what they should have been. And how will it become more real to us? If we'll keep it in our mind and we'll keep saying it, not just for a few minutes on Sunday morning, but this afternoon and tonight and tomorrow. You just need to stop on your way to the refrigerator and go, Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'm full of goodness. I'm full of goodness because the greater one's inside me, the good one's inside me. Hmm? My nature is good. I have the divine nature inside me. Hallelujah. The miracle of the new birth brought that to pass. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ. That's why we needed to bury that old man. Because he was bad. <laughs> we need to put him under. Huh? Huh? And even though your body hadn't been born again, and it can be tempted to do bad, that's when you need to grab it by the throat and slap it back down in the casket. Yes. Mortify, crucify, count it dead, treat it dead. And you need to yell out, that's not my nature. Hmm? Everybody's got flesh. Your flesh will do anything you let it do. Your flesh hadn't been born again. It's just like Joe Sinner's flesh down the street. It will do anything you let it do. And out in this world, because this body is connected to this world and affected by the same curse, it's pulled. But that's not my nature. That's not my core. That's not my heart. That's not my inside. And I can choose to resist that and ignore that and yield to what's inside me. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Hallelujah. The, the vine is alive. And I as a branch am connected to this living vine. Yet not I. But Christ lives in me. Come on, say it out loud. Christ lives in me. Say it again. Christ lives in me. Me. Is he good? Is he all good? Is he only good? He's in you. He's in you. Now we need to stop 
acknowledging every bad thing about our flesh and unrenewed mind and mistakes in our life. And we need to begin doing what the Bible said, acknowledging every good thing which is in us in Christ Jesus. And the more mindful you get of the good, the more aware of it, you're going to yield to the good and it's going to manifest. It's going to come out. Tell your neighbor, help them out. Look at them and tell them, quit talking the bad. Stop it. Leave it alone. <laughs> what, are we going, what are we going to speak? What are we going to acknowledge? Every good thing which is in us in Christ Jesus. How many good things is that? Are, are there? How many See, when we get focused on this, we're not going to run out. Right. We're going to find out it's thing after thing yeah. after Amen. thing. Why? Because we're talking about Him. Right. Yeah. But the great thing about it, all that's in us. Because uh-huh. He's in us. I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Let these words sink down into your ears. Hallelujah. Make a choice to believe them right now. Decide to not listen to the devil again. Tell you about how bad you are. I believe I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. Come on, are y'all listening? Yes, sir. Yes. Make a decision right now not to listen, not to think on how bad I am yes. or how bad I've been. That's the accuser of the brethren. Yes, Shut him down. Yes. Shut the door. Yes. Stop it and begin. Don't look out here. Don't look back in the past. Look inside you and begin to acknowledge every good thing <laughs> that is in you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, everybody. Oh, hallelujah.